This is Deckard 6. I'm going to stay inside and eat junk food, so let's just play some video games. I got my training out of the way. The uh, Samurai is still selling. Nerd Box is still being developed. R&D Lab still putting out points. All is right with the world. We're going to put out sort of a small filler game before we develop our new engine and go for our Vikings. We're going to put out a maze casual and I'm trying to decide what to put that on. I'm thinking the Gurmak is still really good in shares, so it's going to go out on the Gurmak. I think that'll work. And I'm going to hedge my bets. I don't think I can use the uh, GS. I know PC's bad with casual, so I'm going to put it out on the new. And maybe just the three, maybe the 360? How much does it cost to put it out extra on the 360? It doubles our output cost, or uh, base cost. So we're not going to put it on the 360. So the Gurmak and the new. It's going to be for young, I think. And it's, let's see, going to use our multi-engine. What are we going to call it? Labyrinth. with a funky spelling. And yes, a for a uh, pedantic person can comment, I know labyrinths are technically different than mazes. But for the purposes of general uh, speech, they are interchangeable. All right. We don't need engine or story and quest that much. However, Billy can't handle everything on his own. So we have to buff these up just enough to get Billy to be able to handle it. Yeah. Let's clear out some of these. Quick saving, mod supports, save to cloud. There we go and make sure we get everything in there for gameplay. So Brenda on engine, Billy on uh, gameplay, and Ricky on... Yeah, that looks right. Off we go. Fortunately, we can't actually make smaller sized games. It just screws up the uh, point balance if you try to go back a category. So we're stuck stuck making a large size little uh, Facebook game, essentially. Unfortunately, there really isn't a category for, like, Facebook game, because you see how PC is awful with casual, but really, what is one of the most commonly typed, you know, played game on the PC these days? Mm, what do we want more of? Artificial intelligence or sound? I think sound. Because you get things like Candy uh, Crush Saga. They're huge. Yep, other industry agrees with this. All right. And the uh, development in Game Dev Tycoon just doesn't reflect that shift in PC gaming. Artificial intelligence is super not important to anything. We can just cut that out completely. And we'll just boost dialogue until uh, Buddy can handle the level design. And I'll get a little artificial intelligence in there. Just a teeny tiny bit. And we'll put some AI difficulty in there. So maybe you can have some things like a race AI. So, you know, see who can get to the center of the maze first. And that looks like we're ready to go. The uh, nerd box isn't nearly done, so it should be ready for our Viking release in the next year. It'll actually have some time to develop some sales and be really successful, too. At least I'm hoping it'll be really successful. Hype's looking pretty good. Oh, oh, our price point. It, re it does reset, and we're actually going to just leave it at 15 for this game. Because I'm not super, uh, I'm not super uh, 
so excited about this one. All right, graphics are all the way up like they're supposed to be. I think this is a basically a good lineup. We'll throw in maybe open world. Not sure how that would actually work in a maze game. Oh, that actually. Uh, there we can get we can get everything. There we go. Maybe some greater world you can explore to find the different sub mazes in. All right, we're almost at 500 hype, and I'm not sure if price point uh, matters for different uh, consoles. All right, the EPA thing. Yep, we can pay 200k to lower our bad boy a little bit. I don't think we really picked up much bad boy anyway, but I know we did. Uh, steal a couple of topics just to help move our uh, topic research along. Are we going to announce the nerd box? Of course we're going to announce the nerd box. I can't think of any reason not to announce the nerd box. Alright, now we're actually to take a second to read the press release. It is said to be able to compete with high-end consoles. All right, we did not get a comment about a variety of features, so we got able to compete with high-end consoles, which means our basic tech level is good. Hmm, uh, this is interesting. This is a new event. Today, Holocorp, a new gaming company, has just announced they will be releasing the new console, the Holobox. Great original name there. It will display games using holographic technology and eradicate the need for game discs. Games will be loaded on a, into a small flash drive, which is then inserted into the console. This will reduce the cost of games. They anticipated the hollow box will be a huge success. It will be released early next year. Huh. That could be an uh, interesting development, particularly as our nerd box is coming out around the same time. You know, all I'm thinking is, couldn't they have just called it the hollow deck instead of the hollow box? Everything's boxes these days. Now I'm sad about making the nerd box. I always thought I was being, you know, somewhat, you know, humorous and referential, and now I'm just being copycat. All right. Oh, great. We're probably going to have more researches after this. What do we got? Realistic particles, cooperative play, no loading screens. Our R&D lab. Yep, reviews for Labyrinth. Hmm. Four. Five. Six. And four. Yeah. Well. At least it's going to provide a uh, low point of comparison for our next game. And we didn't hype this one at all, so that's something, I mean, right? Right? And we're not actually losing fans. Let's see, what do we have for topic research? Is surgery, that's an old one. Uh, let's see. Alternate world, that's a new one. And tower defense, that's a new one. We can also potentially research some graphics. Let's get some basic holograms. Yeah, let's throw that in there. And story and quests, we can throw in branching story, sure. We're going to probably have too many features to, to make full advantage of this engine. I mean, there's so many more features to add, so it's sort of screwing up by the usual, yeah, add two to three features per engine just because there's so many more things we can add. But we can't make use of them all, is the thing. Uh, let's do a new topic research then. City. I think that's an old one. Nerds has released the Nerd Box. Oh, the feature list is extensive. Okay. That means this should be greatly successful. Our uh, quality control is great, so this will run great without issue, which means we can turn down our spending on the hardware lab to next to nil and still be able to meet all the requirements. Put that at just 480k per month. 
and we are going to create a custom engine the everything engine we're just throwing everything but the kitchen sink in here name of the textures basic holograms graphics version 5 straight cover 3d branching story physics ai companion swift loading everything but the kitchen sink maze and casual is a great combination World design is not very important yet. We didn't do much of that. And platform match, and the Gurmak is young. So I think I'm wondering, is is Gurmak just not good with casual? That might have been the issue. I probably should have made the new our uh, primary uh, focus. Yep, and it always annoys me that you only get... Oh, our actually Harbor Lab is not keeping up, is it? No, we're just too successful, so I'm going to up this to close to a, close to a million on our basic budget for our hardware lab. Hopefully that keeps up. The everything engine is now complete. We will do a real quick cycle of training. Just lickety split out the door. Because we need to get ready for G3. Uh, I don't have another tech lab specialist to reduce our tech costs. Sure, and you're already... Oh, no. We're, we're trying to get points up for G3. So. I guess we'll just send a lot of people on uh, time trials. Because their scores on everything else are getting so high that maybe we just want them to get more stuff out, like more points out quicker. Let's see. You're still doing trying to balance you out. And you're doing pretty good. So we'll balance you out a little bit. You're way ahead. And you are not quite super far ahead yet, so you can get one of those game design courses. Large booth. Are we going to be ready for G3? I just need somebody to finish so we can actually start making the game. Oh, good, and we have got through our hard, uh, hardware backlog. All right. Create new game. Mature. Vikings. Action. For the Nerd Box, the PS3, and the uh, 360. Using the Everything Engine. All right, I'm probably going to butcher the spelling on this, but the... Jorms Vikings. The uh, Viking mercenaries who uh, only had their shields painted black rather than having any crest on them. Oh, now you guys want vacation time? Great. Well, we're still just starting, so I guess I could send it out real quick. Uh, Mark is now is, uh, normalized. That was a real quick one. Alright, we're doing an action game, so engine is super important, gameplay is pretty important, story and quest is not that important. We are going to have online play, save to cloud, basic physics... No, we can't quite get all these in. But we can get most of them in. And we can get most of these features in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, double check, we have Ricky on story and quests, Bill on gameplay, and Brenda on engine. Excellent. Yom's Vikings at the G3. I think we're a little late to get full advantage of it, but we're getting at least some hype out of this. So, why am I so excited about Vikings? Well, one of the things I've done in my free time is actually I've learned Viking martial arts. Saga-based sword fighting. Wow, this is... Are you guys still not joining in for this thing because you were on vacation? Come on, you really need your points in here, guys. Really important. There we go. Uh, sorry, I was... Uh, I learned saga-based sword fighting. They looked at the sagas and looked at all the descriptions of sword fighting and went, hmm, I wonder if people really fought like this and tried it out. And it turns out it worked 
and match the historical record of you know, like how people have been killed in combat, what the weapons looked like. And they started adapting it for a uh, historical recreation sword fighting. And quite frankly, it's a blast. Let's see, we don't need much in dialogues. We do want everything we can fit from that new AI stuff. Better AI, AI companions, and our new level design with swift loading. Excellent. So I learned some basic uh, short and shield and uh, spear viking fighting. Also got to experiment a little bit with the axe. I could go probably give a full hour lecture and at the very least fill up the rest of this video detailing the art of viking sword fighting and fighting in general. But I will spare that and simply confine it to the making of this uh, particular game. For example, the uh, spear being the classic weapon. We all learned it because odds are if you were going to be fighting in a group, you were going to have a spear. You had your front line typically armed with axes and everyone behind them armed with the spear. Because the axe had a unique hook shape that could actually uh, pull shields out of the way and then allow your buddies behind them to spear them in the face. It was quite a useful, uh, useful tactic. And one of the main things Vikings did is rather than charging in like they're portrayed in uh, Hollywood in the movies, is they'd sit back and they'd wait for their opponents to come into them, uh, hit them with the shield wall, and then once the opponent had broken themselves on the uh, axes and spears, then they'd charge out with swords and axe to uh, rout the already broken opponent. And I'm going to end my lecture here because, quite frankly, Jorms Vikings is nearly done. You could also follow this one up with a sequel uh, with the Varingian Guard, the uh, Viking mercenaries for the uh, Byzantine Empire, but we're trying to hit new topics, so I don't think sequels will be that important. And let's face it, we're rolling in money, so I'm not going to have to do like, oh man, we're low on cash, we need to do a sequel just to cash out. The Nerd Box is selling millions of units, it's making us tons of money, and we're going to release our first new uh, game on the uh, on the nerd box. Oh right, our price point before we sell it. We're going to turn this up to say 22 credits. That sounds good to me. And post dev is done. New record in technology, which is good. All the, uh, oh God, we're gonna have even more research to do. Superior AI, advanced quest, realistic plant life, interactive strategy, moral choices, realistic, good grief game. All right, we also need to start getting ourselves ready for uh, AAA games, which means I think we're gonna start with Buddy. Buddy, yeah, you are going to, we can't do training yet. I can't, oh yeah, I don't have the reviews going. Yorms Vikings, oh, this is not as awesome as I was hoping. Action games in the nerd box work well. Beautiful. Yes, these are, this is good, but not great. That's straight sevens. Well, all right. Anyway, train. You need to start training in level design. And we need to get a uh, generate game report on the Yorms Vikings. See if we can find out what went wrong. And everyone else can do a contract work while they're working. Okay, we're making fans. We uh, made significant money in that first. Whoa! Ah, we're also not. We're also off sync for G3 now. Old engine giveaway. Give away our newer engine, which is actually not that new anymore. I'm hoping I Viking and Action is actually a good combination. If it ends up being not a good combination, I'll eat my socks. Which, if you've seen my socks, is a truly death-defying bet to take. Come on. Alright, Viking is no, uh, not Viking. Uh, Buddy is now skilled in level design. He's now specialized in that. The 3GS. Yep, that's that's a that's a console that definitely got made in real life. 
Viking and action is a great combination. Excellent. Oh, the nerd box is not great for mature. That's what screwed us over. Hmm. I wonder why. What affects the uh, market share for various, uh, like, what affects your uh, demographics for your own console? Hmm. Oh, bull hockey. Well, we still have a quarter of a billion dollars. We're not in danger of anything going wrong. And we're about to get graphics version 6, which means we can actually start thinking about developing a new uh, console soon enough. But for the time being, we're going to pump out some points. I am so disappointed Dorms Vikings did not sell that well. I mean, we're selling uh, millions of units, just not as many millions as I would have liked. Programming course. Yeah, we're at the point where everyone has to start doing the super expensive training, so... Hmm. All right, you're good for your specialization, right? Yes, you totally are. So you don't technically need to do any more. You're good for your specialization, right? You are. We'll throw you some more code jam just to keep our tech points up since we're getting a little design heavy. I saw that with Vikings, and that probably also contributed to its mediocre success. Uh, you're good for gameplay. Yep, excellent. So we'll throw just another game design course at you. And we see you. You're good for things. Yep. So we'll actually just throw another programming course at you. Graphics version 6 is unlocked. So as soon as we get some more features to go with it, we can start throwing that into our new uh, game console. I'm actually going to wait and let our R&D lab generate some points before I start research on AAA games, because we need at least three specialists, and each of those costs 200 research points to make. Once this round of training is done, you guys have to go on vacation, so I think you guys will do some research while they're away. We can't actually do any big research since we're low on points, but you can grab some new topics. Uh, nothing new. These are all classic ones from the core game. Ice hockey. I'll grab it because it's you know it's a new topic, but I'm tired of making sports uh, subgenres at this point. We made so many of those, and we'll see what available. Yep, three uh, three GS comes out. Everyone's still working. Yorm's Vikings made uh, 62 million in sales. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Particularly considering how successful some of our other games have been. Now, if I was trying to do just for success, I would then totally go and do a sequel to either our Dark Fantasy or our Samurai games. Probably our Samurai. But we need something else. Something different. We're going to do a tower defense since we're trying to use new topics. It'll be for everybody. It'll be a strategy game on the... Oh, wow, why is PC so low at the moment? Good grief. Oh, and the hollow box is doing awful. Alright, so we're going to put this on the... Nerd box. I hope it works on the Nerd box, since the Nerd box is this single top-selling console. Uh, we'll put it also out on the Gurmac, and we'll throw it out on the PC as well. And we'll be using our Everything Engine, and this will be. Uh, let's see. Two towers. Will it be a Lord of the Rings tower defense game? Uh, focusing on the conflict between uh, Minas Tirith and Minas Morgul. Graphics version 5, yep. It's been a while since I've done a strategy game. I hope I remember how to do them. And I really hope strategy works decently on uh, the
the nerd box. Let's see. So, strategy. Starts off similar to simulation and action games. Where you want engine, you want gameplay, you want low story and quests. So, that looks like a pretty good setup that we have by default here. The main difference, as I recall, is on the third screen where we are going to switch it around so it wants more world design, less graphics. And I'm going to lower our price point just a bit back down to 20 credits. When I'm less than 100% sure, even though I was 100% sure on, you know, Vikings, it's just, I got cut out of left field. Oh, and here we get a hype option. You know what, I'm going to hype it and I'm going to re-raise our price point. Because if we're going to bet on it, we might as well bet big. And once again, we have enough money we can afford to do uh, mediocre on this game. Let's see how big we can go, though, if it ends up being successful. Uh, artificial intelligence is the most important thing. Level design second, and then gra uh, dialogue is next. The very bottom. We will not be making G3, will we? Well, I'm going to do a small campaign anyway, just in case we don't. You know, I think we could make G3 if we end up sitting around in post-dev. And that'll actually help get us back on sync. If we just sit around in some post-dev and then release with G right immediately after G3. Yeah, let's do that. Um, we're not doing an action game, so once again, I am going to skip you, Red Explosive Barrels. Product placement, no thank you. I'm tempted to actually, you know, throw that in as point if sometime during the series it pops up during an action game. Alright, so, here's where we start changing things. World design is significantly more important than it was. Graphics is less. I think sound is less? I'm not exactly sure. So we're turning off Advanced Studio Trevor 3D. We're turning up graphics until we can fit the sound. We're dropping surround and going to stereo sound and turning that up until it fits, and we're throwing in all our world design. That looks pretty good. I'm not sure if it's an ideal makeup, but it should be at least an adequate one. And we actually are able to fit in just about every feature except for our graphics ones, because our graphics are high, and then we have all those weird extra features in there. Oh, you guys are starting to get tired, so have some Black Bull. Product placement that doesn't actually exist. Alright, large booth for G3. I don't think we're actually going to have to wait for it. I think we're still just going to be in normal bug fixing. Hey, we broke a thousand points in uh, technology. We might even break a thousand points in design. Yep, we totally did. Wow, we're doing quite well. Over a thousand points in design and a thousand points in tech. And as soon as G3 comes around, we'll probably have something close to 800 hype. This could be a smashing success as long as it scores at least 8s across the board. Okay, 600 hype. Still great. Yeah, this really needs to just make at least 8s, and it will be amazing. If it's not 8s, it'll be freaking awful. Because of our high price point, our... Uh, hyping expectations. So we'll wait a little while and get some of these post-dev points in there. Yep, the Ouya is coming out. That's not going to be hugely successful. But we scored two new records with our, tower, our two towers strategy game. And we're ready to release that sucker. Only one point of new research. That's actually good. Buddy, you start doing the game to the port. Oh, here comes the reviews. All right, I'm seeing some tens flash by, but it settles on an eight. That's good. Settles on another eight. That's good. If we get at least one more eight, we're okay. Eight, 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 nine. That's not perfect, but that's what we need. We can also start our hardware lab. All right, we got almost a million sales in the first week. Great. 
Oh, no, we need to do some research first. Since we have graphics version 6, we can now release a new console. But let's see if we can get some additional features to go in it. What do we need to go in? Uh, is video playback one? I think video playback's one. So let's throw that in there. What else? What else? We're once again focusing on things that show up in our engine or our console. So we want realistic sound because that's going to show up in there. Uh, was there no loading screens? I'm pretty sure there's no loading screens at some point. Yeah, no loading screens. There we go. And we'll end up with something to get us some diversity. We'll throw something in story and quests. We'll throw moral choices in there. So we get something that's design based. We predicted it would be successful and we scored at least eight so we get a bonus to our sales. Excellent. All right, so. Nerdbox does not work for strategy. Good to know. Uh, everyone worked great, and the tower defense with strategy worked great. So I guess the Nerdbox is truly a console. Alright, come on guys, finish your dang research. I can't make the new console until you guys are done with that. Everyone else, go do a uh, contract work, do the uh, alien search. For all the times I've run this, I've never actually found any aliens. You guys disappoint me. That'll also get us some research points to hopefully make another specialist. Alright. Hardware lab. Develop a console. This one is going to be the nerd core. Oh wow, we're running out of time. We're actually over time. So I'm going to make the nerd core and then we're going to call it. Graphics version 6. Basic physics video playback. Yep, tons of new features to put there. Uh, realistic sound apparently doesn't actually show up in this. So uh, that's not technically a wasted feature, but not really relevant. So a couple of new features. Graphics version 6. Start development. Crank up the budget. You guys can go on vacation. And once again, I will do the uh, training and probably some engine smithing off screen. And then we'll be back uh, for next time. This is Deckard Six, signing off.